Kenny Brown's rear grip kit tames tail happy S197 Mustangs by altering the rear suspension geometry to increase grip while accelerating, braking, and cornering. Besides lowering the rear roll center and increasing anti dive and anti lift geometry, the system eliminates seven out of the eight rubber bushings in the rear suspension to increase predictability and response. The result is a Mustang that's easier to drive at the limit and puts the power down better from a stoplight or out of a corner. The Kenny Brown Panard Bar Kit lowers the rear roll center about 4 inches and replaces the factory rubber Panard Bar bushings with spherical rod ends. One side is left hand thread, so the length of the bar can be adjusted without unbolting it. The Kenny Brown U-Link, or third link, is a direct replacement for the factory upper control arm. We'll discuss how it's different from the factory piece later, but it's a simple, critical piece of the rear grip kit. A spherical rod end is used at the front, and the factory rubber bushing is retained at the rear to minimize noise, vibration, and harshness. More race-grade spherical rod ends are found on the double adjustable aluminum rear lower control arms. Not only do these arms include spaces to align the control arms to the center line of the chassis, they also shave over four pounds off the rear suspension. Like the Panard bar, one end is left-hand thread for easy adjustment. The anti-squat traction brackets move the rear lower control arm mounting point down about two inches to increase grip when launching at the drag strip or out of a corner. These are especially important if your Mustang has been lowered as these brackets correct the instant center location to restore anti-squat geometry lost when lowering a Mustang. The rear grip kit installation is so straightforward that we're going to install it on this 2012 Mustang in a driveway on jack stands. First, jack up the Mustang and support it securely on four jack stands. This process is especially easy if you have a set of Kenny Brown jacking rails. Yes, that's a product plug, but if you've ever tried to jack up one of these cars, you know how hard it is without a frame lift. Jacking rails makes this job infinitely easier. Do yourself a favor and get some. Whenever your car is on jack stands, always remove the wheels and put them under the car. So if the car happens to fall off the jack stands, it'll fall on the wheels and not on you. Use a floor jack to support the front part of the differential. Then squeeze and release the clips that secure the back seat to the floor and remove the back seat cushion. Then using a 5 16 or 24 millimeter socket, remove the bolt securing the U-link to the floor pan. Then use an 18 millimeter socket to remove the remaining two bolts that secure the U-link bracket to the floor. Use a 21 millimeter socket to remove the control arm nut from the differential mount. After pulling the bolt out from the differential ends rubber bushing, route the factory upper control arm module out from under the car. With the factory control arm module removed, let's compare it to the Kenny Brown setup. Obviously, the factory arm's rubber bushing is replaced with a spherical rod end, but also note that the Kenny Brown U-Link's geometry is different than the factory piece. This reduces the instant center migration when the rear suspension moves around, and improves anti-squat and anti-lift geometry, which is critical on lowered Mustangs. With the Kenny Brown U-Link into position, use blue thread locker on all three mounting bracket bolts. After loosely installing the bolts, tighten the two rear mount bolts to 85 foot-pounds and the bolt inside the car and on the differential to 129 foot-pounds. Next up are the control arms. We used the locking pliers to free the parking brake cables from the caliper levers. Then, remove the retaining clip to free the parking brake cable from its mounting bracket. So the axle doesn't move out of position while you're working, only remove and install one control arm at a time. We started on the right side and removed the front and rear control arm bolts. With the short spacer at the front and facing outward, loosely install the Kenny Brown lower control arm. 
torque the front lower control arm bolt to 95 foot-pounds. Use some zip ties to retain the parking brake cable to the Kenny Brown lower control arm. After you're done, repeat the control arm removal and installation process for the other side of the car. Time for the anti-squat traction brackets. If your axle has weights bolted here, remove them. Slip the anti-squat traction bracket into position and loosely install the bolts. Use the included 2.5 inch spacer where the factory control arm was located. Loosely install the 12mm bolt at the top hole of the bracket and use the remaining 9 16th bolt for the new lower control arm pivot at the bottom. Be sure to have the long spacer on the inside of the spherical rod end. Torque the top 12mm bolt to 59 foot-pounds. Torque the remaining 9 16 bolts to 95 foot-pounds. Use two open-ended wrenches to verify that the jam nuts are tight. With the lower control arm and anti-squat traction bracket installation complete, the last aspect of the Kenny Brown rear grip kit is the panner bar and rear roll center relocation system. First, remove the rear sway bar and end links completely from the car. Kenny Brown doesn't recommend reinstalling the rear sway bar with the rear grip kit, so just set it aside. Next, remove the two bolts that hold the rear panner bar to the chassis side and also the axle side. We had to use a pry bar to pry it out of the chassis bracket. Then, remove the bolts for the factory panner bar cross brace and remove the brace. On the left side, use the factory bolts to hang the Kenny Brown Pannard brace while you work on the following step. With the Kenny Brown Pannard cross brace up inside the Kenny Brown right side Pannard bracket, slide the two into position so the holes in the new Pannard bracket and Pannard cross brace align with the hole where the factory Pannard bar was anchored. With everything bolted up, tighten the left side chassis bolts to 46 foot-pounds and the right side bolt to 129 foot-pounds. The Kenny Brown right side chassis bracket needs a hole drilled in the factory pannard bar mount. Use a 5 16 inch drill bit, lubricated with oil, to make the hole. Use the included hardware and torque it to 14 foot-pounds. The Kenny Brown axle side panard bar bracket captures the left side of the panard bar, so loosely install the panard bar and hardware now. Flip the Kenny Brown axle side panard bar bracket around the factory bracket until the upper hole aligns with the factory panard bar mounting hole. A tool helps the holes get lined up perfectly. Use the factory 14mm bolt, the supplied spacer, and the flag nut where the factory panard bar used to mount. Torque the factory 14 mm bolt to 95 foot-pounds. 
slide the right side of the panhard bar into the mounting bracket and adjust it until it aligns with one of the holes. We chose the upper hole so the bar would be close to level on our lowered Mustang. Next, use a series of drill bits to make the 7 16 hole needed to secure the axle side panhard bar bracket to the axle bracket. Torque the supplied fasteners to 41 foot-pounds. Torque the panhard bar bolts to 95 foot-pounds. The panhard bar needs to be adjusted so the axle is centered in the chassis with the car at ride height. We drove the rear of the car up on some ramps and adjusted the panhard bar length until the tire to fender gap was the same on both sides. With the panhard bar length set, tighten the jam nuts. The only thing left is to go to the track and put some of that new rear grip to good use.